Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. It's the 20th of September. Uh, a lot of retirements this week and a few new features as well. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to the ones you care about the most. New videos this week, I finally dived into Azure API management. Nearly every organization is using lots of APIs today. Maybe they're internally hosted. Maybe you're using an API provided by someone else. And maybe you need more control, insight, maybe transform things, whatever that might be, especially with generative AI. Uh, you can do that with Azure API management. So I dive into really what that's all about. Then I also did a video on a big update for App Gateway for containers, which I'll talk about as part of the update as well. But now we have mutual TLS, so mutual authentication for the front end um, to the client. So before there was back end from App Gateway to the back end service, but now I can also have mutual TLS from the client to the App Gateway for containers, which is really important to validate the client really is who they say they are. Think zero trust, think IoT things sending in um, metrics, and also gRPC support for all four of the different types. So that is now available when I quickly go over what that means. So on to what's new on the compute side. So AKS Advanced Container Network Services, these are a whole set of product offerings to give you better observability, security solutions around containerized applications. So they're adding different functionalities. And what they have right here is fully qualified domain name filtering. So this will enable me to create these very granular network policies based on the domain names instead of just the IP addresses. So that can help me mitigate certain risks based on the domain. And there's also a highly available DNS component as well to ensure you have that in un in uninterrupted DNS resolution um, that obviously goes with fully qualified domain names and that mapping. It's really early, I'm having trouble speaking. On the networking side, so as I just talked about, that gateway for containers, the mutual TLS, basically adding the front end, so now I could have end-to-end, -end and gRPC support has gone GA. Storage, so Azure Databox 80 terabytes is now available in Azure China. Remember, Azure Databox is all about that offline ability to import and export data from your location to the Azure cloud, so you get shipped a physical device, copy the data to it, you ship it back, they bring it into your storage account. So now Azure China has the 80 terabyte option. False detach of a zone redundant data disk is now GA. So I think I have those ZRS disks, providing it's a data disk and not an OS disk. If there is now a zone failure, I can false detach that data disk, which means I can then go and use it and attach it somewhere else for my VMs and virtual machine scale sets. So that will reduce my recovery time objective if there are zone outages. Azure NetApp Files now has reserved capacity. So this follows the regular reserve capacity where I'm thinking about I commit to a one or three year use of a certain service and a certain amount of that service and I get a reduction. So I think for the three year, you can go up to 34% reduction and you buy it in stackable increments of 100 tebibytes and one pebibyte for the standard premium and ultra service levels. And again, you specify the specific region you want that. And then also Azure NetApp Files, so we have access-based enumeration and non-browsable shares. So this is for your SMB and dual protocol shares. Access-based enumeration says you're only gonna see the files and folders that you have permissions to. So ordinarily, you'll just see everything and then you'll try and select the file and it says you don't have permission. If I turn on access-based enumeration, I will only see things I have permissions to. Anything I don't have permissions to, I won't see when I go and browse it. And then non-browsable shares, as the name suggests, I can specify on a share to not show if I'm browsing the service from Windows, it will just hide it. I'll have to actually explicitly go and specify the share to go and connect to it. So it's not a security mechanism, it will just hide those shares if I was just browsing around. A Little bit of security uh, by obscurity. On the database side, so Azure Monitor Metrics Export is available in Preview. So we're used to the idea of diagnostic settings. There's a certain latency and a certain way I have to go and configure those and I have to maybe use policy to go and make that on a large scale. 
What this lets me use is use the data collection rules. So with the data collection rules, and it supports a, a whole number of different services across a whole number of regions, I can route those resource metrics based on my data collection rule to the usual culprits. So Azure Storage, Event Hub, and a Log Analytics workspace. So because it's using a data collection rule, I am centrally defining that I have great scale. I can be very specific about what I want to collect. So I can use really good filtering on the specifics of what I want. And obviously by filtering what I want, I'm reducing the amount of data and then by reducing the cost, especially with things like Log Analytics workspaces, if I reduce what I'm sending to it, I reduce my ingress to the service and then I reduce my bill. And again, it's a reduced latency compared to the diagnostic settings. Miscellaneous, a lot of retirements. I'm gonna go through these very, very quickly. So Azure Managed CCF, so the Confidential Consortium Framework, uh, this was a preview service. It's retiring very, very soon. Uh, migrate to the Azure Confidential Ledger. Azure AI Vision, there's a whole bunch of different APIs. There's like image analysis, 4.0 custom image classification, custom object section, product recognition, segment, i.e. background preview APIs will be retired on January 10th, 2025. On March 30th, 2025, spatial analysis edge container will be retired and request to the service will fail. Azure Maps Data Registry API um, 2023 0601 retires, so for September 2025, but also the Azure Maps Creator Services API v2 and the 2023 0301 preview retire September 30th, 2025 as well. Microsoft uh, Genomic Service retires uh, 6th of January 2025. Basically, they recommend you move to Cornwell on Azure prior to that retirement date, because uh, it's a more flexible solution. Azure SQL Edge retiring 30th of September, 2025. Move to SQL Server Express or Standard, or you can use SQL MI um, enabled by Azure Arc. PowerShell 7.2 on Azure Functions. Basically that's in line with PowerShell 7.2 long-term servicing itself is retired and no longer supported on that date, which means Azure Functions can't support it either move to a newer version of PowerShell. SQL automated patching, obviously you have quite a few years, but basically the recommendation here is to move to Azure Update Manager. It's a lot more flexible, it's richer functionality, it supports more types of patching as opposed to just uh, the automated solution. Also SQL Insights uh, retires end of December. Uh, the recommendation here is to move to Database Watcher for that. Remote rendering. So this would let me render high quality interactive 3D content in the cloud and stream it to devices in real time. Uh, they are just retiring that service again this time next year. And Purview Data Sharing, um, retiring 26th of September, 2025. The recommendation here is to just move to Microsoft Fabric, which has external data sharing capabilities. And that's kind of the go forward solution that they are investing in. Non-retirement, so Azure Site Recovery Update Rollup 75. This purely seems to have from the update notes a certificate renewal for VMware in Azure for the modernized appliance has a fix in it. That seems to be the only change there. And then Entra Internet Access has gone GA. So this is part of that Entra suite. And if I think about that secure services edge and the secure web gateway, this is focused when I have a non-federated SaaS, IaaS, PaaS commercial site. Obviously you'd prefer to federate it with Entra and have it tightly integrated and using my conditional access there. But if it's not federated, what this lets me do is send all of that internet-based traffic to the Entra edge, and then I can validate it against security profiles. Now those security profiles, I can have allowed and blocked sites based on a category, uh, but also based on things like the fully qualified domain name. And then when I've defined that, I can then hook it into conditional access policies. So this gives me that ability to control the things that I haven't federated with Entra. And obviously there's other services, there's things like the private access for things on-prem that I wanna grant access to. This is really for those internet-based things. And that was it. As always, I hope that was useful.
until next video, take care.